Hi everyone, welcome to Direct Joy. Happy lunchtime. How are you? Or whatever time you're watching this, because everyone seems to catch the replays. Um, although, hello to all the live people joining me. Um, it's really cool to see you. My name is Sheree, Sheree Joy, and um, I'm here today to give some mental health, emotional well-being, support, advice, guidance don't really like that word we need a new word for guidance um, i need to check out my translations um of what do i like spanish hebrew um italian portuguese um yeah they're always good like other languages and what they can inform us about the world that we live in so yeah let's check one out for guidance because that is basically what's been going on the last week so sorry yeah i'm a psychotherapist psychologist and my thinking around direct joy is to get information directly to you about mental health and well-being that I think is important to be out there. Um, yeah, it started around COVID uh, 16 weeks ago now, or 16 sessions ago, 16 direct joys ago. Um, and yeah, it's become one of these things for a free live stream, the replays go um of yeah very greatly received on instagram and youtube and facebook so yeah keep tuning in hello everybody so today is very much about what's coming up in the ethers and questions like i can't tell you how many times in the last 10 days this has come up in both my personal life and definitely 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 within my work life and just generally questions that people I know and people I come across and things that I immerse myself in <laughs> and the thing is basically kind of that insecurity about transition times and about making decisions about the fact that uh, I'm anxious about and, and it's more than an anxiety it's that sense of how do I live life and I years ago um, got some advice of you can't possibly mess this up you can replace with the uh, f-bomb if you want to and um, I wrote it down on a piece of a4 paper and I scribbled it and I found it um, about six months ago eight months ago something like that and put it up on my Instagram because it fell out the back of one of my drawers and it's like yeah what is it if we live what's it like if we live life with the idea of I cannot possibly mess this up and I meant to check the quote. I don't think I've got the book to hand. I, I will put it in the comments. So there's this guy that writes this book about a shipwreck. And someone gave it to me when I was going through my divorce. and Or going through the separation at that time. And um, it was actually my, my brother-in-law. And he said, you want to read this book? And it is phenomenal uh, when you're going through a shipwreck. When you're going through a massive crisis. And... One of the main things was the fact that, you know, the opening line of this book is the fact that actually, why is it, and Rob Bell talks about this as well, why is it that there's so many things about crisis that bring about health? Why is it that there's so many things that we find jewels of learning and reflection and interest after the event, after the crisis? What is going on in that? How can we, you know, what what is it about that purge and that massive change that bring brings about such wealth, abundance, happiness? And I don't mean financially, I mean internally, you know, that journey that we go through. And I see it all the time, literally all the time, the leap that we make. I've made it excuse me, people I work with make it, I see my children make it, I see their friends make it, I see, you know, everyone and everything, you know, the leaves need to fall in the autumn and things need to die away for there to be new growth in the spring and that needs to, you know, we need the winter and we need the frost and, you know, nature tells us that in it, in itself, you know, in abundance all the time uh, and we keep seeing that change and, you know, the more that we water that, the more that we nurture that, wow what happens then right so but why do we believe that this stuff is impossible why do we believe that we can't do this and that we're going to mess up and that we're going to be a failure or we're going to be abandoned or people are going to laugh at us or there's going to be shame or exclusion and what is it about that what is it about and and, and you know then that response of well I'll try harder harder I'll just keep trying harder. I'll work harder. I'll work longer hours. I'll work at it. I'll think. I have some clients who, in the early days of working, I'll work harder on that. 
I'll go away and work harder. It's not homework. This is not homework. Like this is life. This is living. Yeah. We we don't we don't need homework at it. We try enough as it is. Actually, what we need is to step back to step up, as a true friend would say. We need to step back to step up because when we step back, we take time. We take space for ourselves and then we can step up. But when we keep trying hard, we get that anxiety to achieve. We get that anxiety to perform. But what would it be like if we didn't have that fear of exclusion, that fear of abandonment, that fear of failure? Now, we need this stuff, OK? We need we need these fears because they're a very primitive, primal response to danger. Because to be excluded, to be abandoned, to, you know we wouldn't survive yeah you wouldn't be in if you think about a pack of cubs you wouldn't you, you don't want to be excluded it would be awful to be excluded and I don't know about you I don't know if that's something that might be coming up for you at that at the moment about oh what's it like to be excluded to be left out to not be part of a clan to not be part of a tribe to not be part of your family or to feel like the ugly duckling or the 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 one left out and yeah um Oh, another book, uh, Clarissa. Oh, I'm terrible at this. I'm, I, I read all these books and then uh, pick halt in vases. I'll also poke this, uh, Walking with the Wolves, um, or something similar to that title. She talks about the Ugly Duckling story in so many different ways and so many different guises and the impact that has down the ancestral links that we pick up and, and what we can actually do with that. And that's certainly some fantastic work if you can give yourself the opportunity to really go deep with what that means for you and to grieve that place and to shed that um it really gives us a sense in our body of shedding uh, away the the pains of the past the ancestral links and what that then means for how we show up and how we perform and how we what we do with that fear because actually can you exclude yourself can you abandon yourself? Can you be a failure? Or is there something really, really important in that message of you can't possibly mess this up? In the book that I referred to earlier about the shipwreck, there's this uh, story that he tells about the fact that when the shipwreck happens, we cling on. We cling on to anything that is familiar my goodness we cling on and it doesn't matter what it is whatever tiny plank of wood whatever familiar thing we will cling on i get this jaw clenching knuckle clenching and i know that that anxiety is there i, I recognize that as a familiarity in my body and i invite you to that place to understand what happens in your body when you start clinging on to things that are familiar because it's those familiar things that we cling on to especially in a shipwreck and we can envisage that that shipwreck's happening before it happens right so we can start fearing the crisis and going into this survival mode even before it even happens even before it's even thought of and so what's that like because then change is absolutely impossible you're clinging on so how's it going to move? How is these parts of the shipwreck ever going to form into a different kind of boat? How is it going to form into another kind of canoe? How is it going to even become an aeroplane so you can soar above it? What's it like to just let go and let God, maybe? That sense of kind of divinity in yourself, that sense of, ah, uh, okay, I can have faith, I can have trust, I can have understanding. I can't necessarily make sense of it. I can't try hard. I can't get understanding. I can't make it happen. I can't have control over it. And I can understand that I'm in fear. But what's it like to allow space, to allow time, to allow what approach you want? So you don't exclude yourself, so you don't abandon yourself, so you don't feel like a failure because you've done it in all integrity for yourself, whatever this may be. And it might not be the way that your family do things. It may not be the way that work does things. It may not be the way that... Thank you, Hannah. That's a very nice thing to say. Um, Hannah's just done a comment saying I'm, oh, I look gorgeous and that's just lovely to hear. Um, you know, what's it like to reset what's it like to find an approach where you feel that you've come home to you i 
I'm such an advocate for that in finding our identity, finding our approach where we can go, you know what, I just, I feel good. You know, it's a bit like when you pump the music up and you go, yeah, I feel good. I can be barefoot dancing in the kitchen in this moment. And what's that truly like to be in integrity without trying hard, without swimming against the river, just being totally. And that is motivation, right? Someone said to me the other day, I had an introductory call and they were like, I need motivating, I need business, I need business coaching, I need to put my prices up. It's like, OK, so put your prices up. You don't need you don't need to pay me. You already know the answer. You don't need to pay me to help you know that you know that already. And they're like, oh, well, you could have just charged me for that. And it's like, yeah, I could. But that's not in integrity with the work that I do. If you want to go further, deeper. That's the work I do. And that's where I feel comfortable. That's the waters that I swim in so easily. If you want to go really deep, if you want to really challenge yourself, if you really want to be challenged and finding that space, finding that time to do that work, learning from the failures, noticing that you're clinging on, taking one hand off and reaching for something else before you let go of the shipwreck is okay. And we do that and it's slow and it's considered and it's an approach and it's tailor-made for you. And it is what you need it to be. But it's really important to me that we understand that impossible is nothing. And okay, Adidas said that, not me. I thought it was me. Of course I did. Because I really, 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 really strongly believe that impossible is nothing. I was raised as a Christian and I hear and see and was immersed in that world that I don't hear some of the negative messages that other people see. I hear and see the belief and the faith and the amazing hope that we can have in ourselves, in others and in the divine, in God. And that's what fuels me. And they're the patterns that I see of, oh, OK, actually, we can replay this. We can reset this. We can work this and we can find that in enjoyment, that literally that joy in life. And, you know, that is in other face, that is in other approaches. And I now know that and immerse myself in those too. And I find all of this extremely motivating. But we have times where we still come back to, oh, <laughs> this is hard and I'm going to hang on. And because our egos need us to hold on our structure of our mind needs us to hold on to what's familiar because if it's not familiar it's absolutely petrifying and we go back to the primitive primal difficult survival mode and then other things kick in we're low in mood we don't want to get out of bed in the morning we drink too much we smoke too much we party too hard we don't party enough we don't go out social anxiety kicks in paranoia kicks in all of these nasties that just toxicate that's not the word into our body and into our minds and into our souls, our spirits, our relationships. But the moment that we can recognise that we do not exclude ourselves, we do not abandon ourselves and we stay in integrity to ourselves, there's no failure. There actually really isn't a shipwreck. There's an opportunity for learning. There's an opportunity for interest. There's an opportunity for, ah, oh, what do I do now? Where do I go? What is that closure that's allowing me to say, ah, oh, it's not a stop sign. It's a change direction sign. And it doesn't mean that I'm going to go back to what was because that didn't necessarily serve the highest good for me. So hopefully this is motivating. Hopefully we can find that when we believe there is a mess up or when we believe that we may mess up, actually that's an opportunity for growth. That's an opportunity for growth in some way. And it's definitely an invitation to go deeper um, if you choose to. I feel like I've spoken very, very quickly and but said all I need to say. Um, it really is something at the moment that is going on for a lot of people. I can't stress that enough. Um, today's direct joy was due to be about something else. Um, but given the fact that this is coming up so much in questions and so much in the people around that I'm connected with, I thought it was really important to put that out here. Um, some of the other tools that I find really helpful are loud music and dancing. 
getting as much sleep and rest as you can. And by that, I mean stillness. Sit, sit. Allow yourself to sit and be still and know where you're at with that. Temporary reliefs don't really relieve, but go there if you need to and don't beat yourself up about it. Just allow it, allow the flow, allow your shoulders to drop, allow your mind to rest, allow your heart to take the lead because our heart-centered living really is truly the way to be. Um, our minds need to be a servant of our hearts, not the other way around. And um, yeah, extremely important. So take the opportunity, learn, invite yourself to learn to be in an observation and see what comes up. Um, I love supporting people with this work. Um, and sometimes it can actually be really, really, really quick and rewarding as well. Usually there's just a block in the way that we can't see. And blind spots are, you know, definitely something that I work with and definitely something I love to work with really quick. And they open up massive opportunities. Um, and, you know, it can be the result of, of past traumas. It can be the result of just, you know, the way that you've always felt. And, you know, if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. So that's all from me today. Um, next week I am on holiday. Um, so I will not be here. I will be still. I will be resting um, and I will be doing all the good stuff. Um, and yeah, so I will be back the week after. And I don't know if it'll be on a Tuesday, to be honest. I have no idea. And um, I've stopped introducing it as Happy Tuesday because actually people are literally watching this replay all week. And yeah, so... Um, yeah, this is Direct Joy and this is Cherie Joy and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, stay cool and I will see you in, not next week, the week after. Cheerio!